Hello and welcome to Quartic Training. My name is Nicholas Blaine. I'm going to take you through a number of functions of how to use your Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator, which is going to be of immense use in your in the preparation for your CFA exam, as well as in your jobs in general. This online tutorial consists of eight parts. First of all, part zero is the basic setup. We take you from how to take the how to get the factory settings into a format which is more usable. Basic algebra and calculator usage, how to use brackets and memories and clearing functions and constant, uh, negative numbers and percentages. In section two, rates of return, we look at compounding, discounting, how to calculate the geometric mean, how to convert interest rates, for example, from nominal to effective rates, continuous compounding, the exponential and logarithm functions. In part three, although combinatorics can be a fairly frightening name, especially to mathematicians that have actually learned about this uh, subject, we're looking at the very basics, which includes factorials, permutations, and combinations. Section four is one of the most important of your exam uh, and your preparation for the exam, which is time value of money. Uh, we look at how to set up the basic five buttons in the third row of your calculator, um, how to compute variables having en entered the previous four, uh, and we apply that in a number of different ways. At section five, cash flow analysis, we look at the cash flow function on the second row of buttons uh, and how to do lots of uh, corporate finance type, type problem projects, project appraisal and NPV, IRR and so on. In section six, we look at statistics. So this is the buttons above number seven and eight. Uh, we look at how we identify uh, means, standard deviations, and so on from individual variables, and also weighted averages. And finally, in section seven, we look at a few other aspects of the calculator, including depreciation, break-even, profit calculations, growth, and amortization. In this first section, we're going to set the calculator up from its factory setting to a format that's going to be more useful in the calculations we're going to do. Your calculator looks like this the first time you switch it on. Now, you may have different forms. Let me just show you the other form of the calculator. There's what is called the student form, which looks like this. And what we're going to be focus on, focusing, focusing on here is the professional version. To all intents and purposes, these are exactly the same. There are one or two differences that I will point out when we get to them. So with this in mind, the first thing we're going to do is set the decimal places. If you want to clear the screen, just press clear down in the bottom left corner. You can see here we have two decimal places. In, all, in order to set up the format, you press second format above the decimal point and it says deck equals two. Now you may like these two decimal places. My suggestion is that you put as many decimal places on it as a calculation needs, which is best done using nine. Now if you put zero to eight, it'll give you exactly that number of decimal places. For example, if you put eight, enter, you can see all the zeros. Now personally, I find these trailing zeros somewhat irritating. So if you press nine, enter, it now gives you the right number of decimal places with no trailing zeros. Um, as a hint, when you're using the calculator, you'll see in the screen various hints as to what you need to press. So it says enter. And the other thing is, you know you've pressed enter correctly because it says equals. If you just press nine equals, then that's not sufficient to put the equal sign in the screen. So it's by pressing enter that you know you've got the right input correctly placed in the memory. Then the up down arrows, which are these two. If we press the up arrow, we move to, well, this 0 0.2 is algebraic operating system. The default setting is CHN. In order to explain what we do, let's consider a fairly basic calculation. Imagine, go back to school and think how you would have, been, how you would have answered the following question. 2 plus 3 times 4. Now, most of you hopefully will say, well, that's 2 plus 12, which is 14. And that is, of course, the correct answer. Some of you may be thinking, well, why is it not 20? If you do the, if you do the operations as you press them, so 2 plus 3, and when you press the multiplication sign, it gives you 5 times 4 is 20. That is not the correct method, but that is what is called chain mode. To move it out of chain mode, we're going to press, well, look at the screen, it says set, second, set and it says AOS which means algebraic operating system that is the correct setup algebraically and that is what we should be using throughout this session now press clear 
The other feature I need to show you is the reset button above the plus and minus button. Never press reset. If you press reset, it goes back to the factory settings that we've just adapted. Uh, so unless you have an emergency, never ever press reset because you'll just have to go through that process again. Some of you may have the old form of the calculator. Um, if you've got the a very old version of the basic calculator, then there is a function p over y. Now we're never going to be dealing with this because you never need to change it from its setting. If you press second p over y, it should say one. Those of you with one of the, a calculator around ten years old may find that that factory setting is twelve. If you've been doing time value of money calculations and you're getting strange answers, press second p over y one enter. That will hopefully give you the right answer. The calculator is now set up and ready to use. Section 1. Basic algebra and calculator usage. On the calculator we have a number of features for basic calculations. Now before we looked at the calculation 2 plus 3 times 4. Let's say we actually want to do chain mode. Let's say we want to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4. On the calculator, press clear before we do a calculation, you have the brackets here. So we press open bracket, 2 plus 3, close bracket, times 4 equals, and there's your 20. It could be, for those of you who have looked at the more advanced concepts later on in this session, let's say we want to compound a, um, we want to calculate the future value, and let's say we're growing at 1%, so we're going to multiply by 1.01 .01 for, let's say, three years. So 1.01, .01, y to the x, open brackets, 3 times 12 close brackets, so that's 1.01 .01 compounded for 36 months or 3 years and that gives us 43%. So there's another example of the brackets. We will go through that type of calculation later on this seminar. Um, clearing. If we're typing in a number, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and we realized we actually wanted 1, 2, 3, 5, this back arrow clears the most recent digit and so we can now type 5. Um, we've also got here the idea of CE, C, C, so CE is clear entry, if we're saying, let's say we want to do 2 times 3, and we accidentally press 4, you now press clear once, and you say 3 equals, and it gives you your answer. If you press clear twice, it clears the whole calculation that you're doing. We'll see other methods for clearing other memories as we get to them. Let's look at the memories. We have 10 memories, 0 up to 9, which you may find useful in longer calculations. This function here says store, and this is recall. So let's say we put 1, 2, 3, and we want to put that into memory. Let's press store 1. And let's take 3, 2, 1, and put that in memory 2, store 2. Now if we press clear, and we press recall 1, plus recall 2 gives us answer 444. So that's an example of how we use the memories. What you'll find later on is that when we're doing things like time and value of money you can press recall n to find how many periods we've put into this, cal this calculation. Unfortunately we've reached the limit of what we're allowed to load onto YouTube. If you'd like to see the rest of this video or the other sections of the calculator tutorial then please visit our website if you'd like any more information, then you'll find lots of details of the courses that we run on our website, which you can see down the bottom of the slide, quartic-training.co.uk. Um, if you'd like to go to the links page on our website, you'll see a uh, website where you can watch this tutorial again or where you can download the slides. If you'd like to speak to us about anything further, then please don't hesitate to contact us. All the details are on the screen in front of you. Quartic Training, invest in your future.